The Joseph Brandt Hospital Emergency Department has seen more people with overdoses, high intoxication, and medical emergencies related to misuse of substances than ever before. Who are we seeing? What is the demographic like? And I think it's everyone. I mean, working from home, I mean, there's a classic meme of, of the, the lady who's working from home and she replaces her tea bag, you know, snips a little thing and it's actually like some bourbon or something. And right. And so you're drinking and that's working from home. And although that's a meme, I think it has, it's actually the, the reason why it's maybe a little bit funny for some people um, unwittingly is, is that it's, it's true, right? There's a truth to um, some of these uh, the boundaries being blurred. And as a result, us turning to different um, uh, coping mechanisms during times of unprecedented stress. LCBO sales and utilization has gone up um, significantly. And I think that speaks to a certain demographic of people who are maybe at risk or maybe already um, drinking for purposes of, you know, managing stress. And, um, and for some people that has taken a turn um, where they, they probably have more problematic drinking for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and then, yeah, as far as opiate use, I, I think that's just ramped up. I, it's hard to say. I think it's just more visible now. There can be interruption in the quality of your life when you're still functioning, when you're still going. I never, you know, I didn't have any trouble with the law. I didn't have any workplace fallout. Nobody would have guessed. Before the pandemic, Susie Reynolds Crick would enjoy a single glass of wine in the evening. And once the pandemic hit and there was that sense of um, the unknown, of fear, of anxiety, um, I think I turned to some self-medicating with alcohol to try to quiet those fears about what is coming, what don't we understand. Um, and then it just sort of spun slowly out of control from there. Now I was drinking alone. And then it got to a point where by 2 p.m. I started thinking about wine. I started wishing away my afternoons. When will it be 5 p.m.? I, I can just see the bottle on my counter. I'm stressed. I have a lot on my plate at work. I just want to get home and crack that bottle of wine. And that's when it began starting to feel more like a crutch, a dependence, something that I no longer wanted, but felt that I needed. Well, I think when you get advanced enough in your um, substance use disorder, you don't have a choice, but to, you don't have a choice, but to drink when you're at home and you have alcohol around. Like there's no question um, because it's that compulsive and it's that much of, there is an obsessive compulsive nature to it. I was tired of waking up in the mornings and having blocks of time that I had lost, that I had no recollection of, but that I was still moving around and talking to people during. So I would wake up in the morning and wonder if I'd said anything stupid to somebody. Do I need to apologize to somebody? How did I get to bed? Those are frightening thoughts. I was tired of having chunks of time lost. Um, I was, I, I had had this small voice inside me for a long time saying, you need to watch this. This isn't healthy anymore. This isn't fun anymore. And I had silenced that little voice with more wine until it just got to a point where I didn't have a choice anymore, but to really reckon with her and come face to face with the fact that I was drinking more than I had ever intended, more than I had ever set out to. And it was no longer a social pleasant activity. It was something I was doing alone under stress. And I was using this as a crutch. She has now been alcohol-free for almost five months, feeling healthier and more present with her family. The stigma attached to substance abuse disorders still deters others from reaching out for help. If you're quote-unquote addicted, I don't like that term, but if you are quote-unquote addicted to whatever, the last place you want to come to is a hospital. I'm not, I'm not saying that that should be the last place, but it just, it's like stigma sandwich, right? <laughs> um, and so... Um, you know, we got to do a better job in terms of addressing that. The medical community has helped to create an understanding that addictions are not a personal choice or moral deficiency, but a medical issue. Shannon believes that with trauma being a major predictor, it should be a societal level issue. We don't have, no one has to do this alone. No one is alone. Um, no one has to do this alone. But hands down, we are not supposed to do this alone. If you or someone you know is dealing with a substance abuse disorder, reach out for help. Reporting for Halton News, I'm Nikki Wesley.